What is up, everybody? Mr. Purtis here. Welcome to Unit 3.4, maybe like this, 3.4, Industrial Revolution and Economic Ideas. We talked in the first video about the cause of the Industrial Revolution. The second video, we talked about new technologies. Last video, we talked about society. And this one, we're going to talk about economic ideas. This is probably going to be a little longer of a video than some of the other ones. There's a lot of dense important stuff in here so if there's ever a video for you to kind of like to zone in and focus in as much as you can this is probably it when we say economic people usually like that's when your brain goes what economic usually deals with money exchange of money trade production of things all that good stuff um so let's rock and roll let's get into this so first thing i want to mention is there's really two different thinkers during this period and two very influential economic thinkers um, people who had opinions on how the government should be involved with businesses. And the first one is this guy, Adam Smith. His theory is laissez-faire, and I'm not very good at French, but it essentially means free market or hands-off. So when we talk about Adam Smith, it's always hands-off because he believes that the government should not get involved in impacting businesses in any way, shape, or form, and that the businesses should be free to do and make decisions for themselves that they feel is best for their business. For example, if they want to pay a worker a dollar an hour to work, they should be allowed to do that without the government telling them it's illegal. And if people aren't willing to work for a dollar an hour, that business is going to have to raise their rates to maybe $2 an hour. And if no one's willing to work at $2 an hour, they will be forced to increase it. This is all about freedom, that the business, and we come back to the Enlightenment a little bit with this, is that the businesses should be allowed and free to do what they want. If a business wants to employ child labor, they should be able to do that. But you as the consumer, if you're like, I am not down with child labor, then you shouldn't buy those products. Um, and that is really the, the idea behind this. And when we say free market, we're talking about like a marketplace to buy and sell things that you should be able to buy whatever you want, whenever you want. Anyone can make it. Anyone can invest it. You should have the freedom to do as you want. We in the United States today are kind of capitalists. We have this belief that you can make what you want, you can do what you want, you can sell what you want at whatever price you want, but there are regulations that, and when I say regulations, I mean there's limits of what the government says you can do. For example, we have laws today that say you can't have a six-year-old working in your factory or working for your business. So there are regulations now. Adam Smith believed the true laissez-faire, hands-off, very little government involvement. You should be able to do what you want. This is really the focus and what is done for the first half of the Industrial Revolution. So laissez-faire, hands-off, free market, also known as capitalism. Um, those terms are all interchangeable. Laissez-faire, free market, capitalism, hands-off. That's Adam Smith. Um, there's another guy who has a totally different take on it, and his name is Karl Marx. And there's a lot on this slide, so I apologize. But his name is Karl Marx. This is also known, this is known as Marxism or communism. And he and his boy, I don't know how tight they were, but it was Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels. They're from Germany. They write a book called the or a pamphlet called the Communist Manifesto. And a manifesto is just like details, explains things. And this is what they believe. And their theory is this: history. All of human history is based on struggle between different social or different classes. If you go back to pre-industrial times, it's nobles and farmers. If you go back even further, there's other groups that are competing with each other for power. And that essentially what Marx says is the current issue, when the current time that we're talking about in history, is between the workers and the owners. He calls the owners the bourgeoisie. It's a French term from the French Revolution for the middle class people. So we got the bougie people who are the owners and the workers who he calls the proletariat. And these two groups of people are at a conflict at this point in the Industrial Revolution, where the owners are trying to make as much money as possible, and they are exploiting these workers, like we talked about in the last video, with low pay and low uh, bad working conditions and long hours. And there's a struggle that exists, is, exists halfway through the Industrial Revolution where these two sides are ready essentially to go to war with each other. Marx predicted, he suggested, he thought that what was going to happen is the workers were so large of a population that they would overthrow these owners destroy all the owners, take over all the factories, and all the workers would say, hey, instead of one of us taking over the factory, why don't we all work this factory together and share the profits equally? So as opposed to a CEO or an owner or a business entrepreneur making all the money, why don't we just divvy it up equally among us? And that is what Marx thought was gonna happen, and he called his system communism. And the system says, 
everyone is 100% equal in this ideal communism of Karl Marx and that there's no money and there's and the way it works is everyone has what they need. You don't work for money. You work for the good of society and that we all are going to come together, sing Kumbaya around the campfire, strumming a guitar and saying, we're all together in this. That's his theory. And that's what he says. There's going to be no money. There's going to be no, when you go to a grocery store, you just take what you need, not what you want. You know, you, whatever it is, you need a TV, you just go get it. And that's the ideal system of communism. There's a ton of issues with this system. I mean, I don't know if you've ever been, I'm sure you all have in a group project, you know, that there's always one person who doesn't do work. And that's the problem with communism. And the other problem with communism is people are greedy and people are going to want more and people are going to cheat the system. So this issue of Marxism or communism, there's a ton of issues with it. And we'll talk about it in class and nothing really happens with it until we get to the 1900s, also known as the 20th century. And there's going to be a couple of revolutions that are based off of this. So free market, government, no government involvement, communism, overthrow everybody, everyone's equal, kumbaya around the campfire. Yay. So here's really what happens, right? So we have these two theories going on. And really what happens is rather than turning to communism, even though the working conditions get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse, and unemployment goes up for a lot of people, up, 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 pay, blah, 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 um, as opposed to turning to communism, a lot of governments said, we got to do something. And this is, again, this is the opposite of cap capitalism or, or hands off, laissez-faire. Um, they say we have to start reforming things because this new industrial society is very unequal and a lot of people are upset. So let's make some reforms. So there's a couple of reforms that are going to happen. Number one, they're going to grant people the right to vote. So we have democracy in a lot of countries in Europe at the time in North America, but the only people who are allowed to vote initially are people who own land and they had to be a man and you had to be white. So there were those three things. In a lot of places in Europe at this time, they get what is called suffrage. Suffrage sounds like a very big negative, like suffering, but that's not what it is. Suffrage just means the right to vote. And a lot of countries grant the right to vote for men, um, not just the men who own land, but all men. And originally, at first, it's just white men, especially in North America and the United States, and then it becomes all men um, totally. Now, we still are ignoring women, but that's another story for another day that we'll get to. But allowing these people the right to vote means that politicians are now going to make laws to help them and to do what they want. For example, you know, you push, you say to your lawmaker, I want minimum wage. And the lawmaker is going to say, OK, you got it because there are so many workers who are going to vote for me. And that's how political parties work. We're also going to see labor reforms. We're going to see the legalization of unions. Unions are when workers come together and negotiate together. There's a, the basketball union, major league baseball union. I'm in the teachers union. We'll talk more about this in class. But the idea is that workers join together and negotiate together because there's more power in greater numbers than every individual negotiating and getting a better wages for themselves. Um, there's also going to be a bunch of new laws that are passed, better safety standards, you know, fire exits, fire escapes, minimum wage, child labor laws. Um, uh, the number of hours you can work in a week before you have overtime. All of these things are going to happen to change things and to make people say, I don't know about communism. I'm not really sure I'm dealing with that. I like this capitalist system with some of these reforms. It looks a lot better to me. Two last things. We also see the start of public education. So if kids can't work and work in the factory, we need to have them do something. They can't sit at home all day. So we see the beginning of public education. Public schools are a huge game changer in the United States. It allows people um, no matter of your economic bracket to become educated. It's super important. Um, and the last one is we see the abolition of slavery. Abolition is to get rid of or to abolish or to end. And in this case, we're ab abolishing slavery. So most countries around the world, by the mid 1800s, you can see the map here. If you're really bored, you can check it out. Um, most countries around the world are going to abolish slavery um, in the 1800s as a result of the Industrial Revolution. And, um, and just the enlightenment and these changes are finally going to uh, going to happen. So Whew, that's a lot. There's a lot to process in here. Take your time. Um, if you got any questions, let me know. We'll talk more about this in class. As always, write down anything you have. I'm out.